Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Min and I make a ton of videos about cozy games, farming sims, and my 3DS and my Switch collection. So if you are interested in videos like that, then please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. So in this video, I'm giving you eight things I wish I had known earlier in my gameplay of Roots of Pacha. I just completed my first year in the game. And so these tips will definitely help those who are early on in the game, who just started, and possibly there might be a tip in there for those who have been playing for more hours than I've played so far. I'd also love to hear any of your tips and your tricks down in the comments below. So please, please share with me so we can all kind of get more tips and tricks that are gonna help us throughout the game. My first tip is to save everything in the beginning. You never know when you're gonna need that item. In the early game, there are a lot of quests and you'll need multiple of the same item for those quests. So there were times when I put that in the contribution box and then I actually ended up needing multiple of that item and I had only saved one. So you need to save items for quests, but it's also helpful for when winter comes around and you can't really get those items. So the items that I'm thinking of are like lavender and things like that, like citronella, things that help heal the animals, anything medicinal, like medicinal herbs, those are things you want to save because if your animals get sick in the winter, you can't really go around and forage lavender as far as I know. You actually would have to go to Ada and then buy it from her. And why buy it and spend the money that's so hard to earn and rack up when you could just have saved that item in the first place. <laughs> My second tip is that when you're attuning animals, if you are choosing to bring home more than one of the same breed, then you should check if the animal is a male or a female. You wanna bring home one male and one female at least, rather than two males. I mean, you can if you want, but later on when you open up the breeding, it's gonna be a lot easier when you've already built up friendship with both a male and a female of that animal. So you can check their gender after you sing a song for them or attune them by clicking, I think it says inquire. So if you don't do this early on and you have both two of the same animals and they're both male, then you can't breed them. So then you'd have to go out, attune a guanaco. I don't even know how to pronounce that one. We'll just say, well, you have to go out and attune another bison, a female bison for your male bison. You have to go there like three or four times to attune it and get it to come to join you. And then you'd have to build up the friendship with it once you invite it before you can breed it. So it's just, gonna save you some time if you just early on, if you're gonna invite more than one of the animal just to have both a male and a female. The third tip I have is that when you place down a building that you ask Kroll to build for you, example, the animal shed or the breeding pen, and you don't like where you placed it, you can actually move it by talking to Kroll again and clicking manage buildings. So unfortunately, as far as I know, you cannot move your house um, or any, I think there's nine plots or something like that. I forget how many plots, maybe more than that, maybe 11, 10 or 11 or something that go all around the town and you can't move those as far as I know, but you can move your animal pens and probably the other things that you'll build from Kroll as you continue on. So it seems like your house stays where you placed it, but you can move the animal shed and stuff like that. You can move that around without having to pay for it. My fourth tip is that in order to grind money, I found that fishing was the most successful thing for me. I would fish for several in-game hours and then I would dry all the fish on the dryer. So use the dryer, it brings in more money than smoking the fish, I believe. So fishing at both the lake, surrounding the town, and then also at the beach, I found were the best places in terms of finding fish that sold for more money. Um, but I think that if you just fish anywhere in general in the game, it's gonna be helpful for you in terms of drying the fish and then contributing those to the clan. You're gonna get more money faster. My fifth tip is that in the winter, there is no grass slash fiber growing. You probably already got rid of rocks and wood. So it's a good time to set paths, organize your items and your product makers on the farm. It's a good time to move buildings. So definitely do that during the winter and make sure that you set paths, whether it's in your animal pens or around the items on your farm 
area before the next spring starts in the winter so that you don't have to worry about the rocks, the grass, and the wood getting in the way and then having to use your stamina to get rid of those items in the spring because you hadn't done it before. Winter ends on the 28th, so winter 28 is when that one ends. There will be a festival on that day, so you'll remember based on that if you forget the day. Okay, my sixth tip is that you can rearrange your tools and your seeds in your inventory. This is a little bit of a simple thing, I guess. Maybe you already know this, but I like to organize my seeds by the season um, at the beginning of each season. So that's in like the first row of my seed bag. You can also organize your tools as well. Some of the tools you won't need as much later on because you upgraded or you got a new tool that replaced that item and just works better. So you can rearrange them in the inventory. It's a little tricky when you first look at it, but once you play around with it, you'll get the hang of it. My seventh tip, second to last, we have one more after this one. Once you open up the beach area in the mine, you no longer have to walk or ride your animal all the way up through the forest to reach the mine. You can just go to the beach, enter the mine there, and then fast travel to the part of the mines that you'd like to go. So this is a lot faster, and I guess it depends on where your house is, but I'm assuming you put your house somewhere near the farm, so the beach is just going to be closer, and you don't have to go all the way up the forest and get distracted because you see things or you see cute animals. Okay, you can just go right down to the beach, and you're good to go. And my eighth tip, this is my final and possibly my most helpful tip. You can change how long the game days are, the in-game days, but you can only change it from the initial screen where you load your saves. So the default time is set to 15 minutes, and if you are in the game playing, you cannot change it. So the default time is set to 15 minutes, like I said, and that can go by pretty quick depending on what you're doing, especially if you're mining or you're fishing or you are you have like a thousand crops that you're trying to water. That's going to take a lot of in-game day. So you're able to change the time to 17.5 minutes for your game day or to 20 minutes. So you can only do that from the first screen upon opening up your save, where your saves are located. So those are all of my tips that I wish I knew earlier on in the game. I am loving Roots of Pacha and I am working on a review coming later on my channel, which is going to talk about what I like about the game, what I dislike, and features that I wish were included in the game. I hope you found something in this video helpful. I enjoyed making it. I really love this game and I'm, I'm loving talking about it. So if you guys want to talk below, please do. You can also join my Discord channel. I talk about a bunch of games in there and we hang out and a lot of people from my Twitch family are in there. So come join and watch the streams on Twitch if you'd like. I will also be streaming on YouTube twice a month is my goal. So check that out. I've already done one so far. Um, and please follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Like I said, I'm on everything. You can click the links in my description down below, or you can search Nintendo Gaming. Have a great day and thank you for watching my video. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!